Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Gacki, my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Got a big game coming up on Thursday Night Football, the Hurricanes in Virginia. A lot of things to talk about, Coach. Congratulations on the most recent win. We'll just start there. I know we had a big week coming up, but it was a, I would call it a cathartic win for the University of Miami. It was just what the doctor ordered. Um, we, uh, you know, got a lot of confidence, which is what, what I think the team needed. Uh, we got a lot of guys in the game. Uh, a lot of guys made plays, a lot of young guys made plays. Um, I think the thing I'm most proud of of the game is the way that the team was on the sideline. Uh, our energy in pregame warm-up was, was fantastic. Energy on the sideline was, was amazing the whole start to finish. Um, and it was guys really being excited for other guys. So even when younger guys were out there making plays, the older guys are rooting them on, cheering them on, and um, the fans were, were great too. It was, it was just a real positive day for Miami football. Coach Van Dyke and Garcia, your two freshman quarterbacks, were almost perfect, I guess. Yeah, I mean, really, when you think about it, you go to Van Dyke, he had one incompletion, and if that ball would have been caught, it would have been a touchdown. I right. did a perfect day with another touchdown. But overall assessment of how they played. I told them before the, uh, the game, I said, this was spring practice. You, you were in the stadium twice in the spring and, 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 and did great on those occasions. So uh, that's the biggest question. You know, you know they can throw the ball. You know, could they handle the moment? Could they handle, you know, you know, being out there with everybody watching them and, and, and the expectation and, and talking to both guys. I said, hey, what's, once the game started, they were, they were more excited than anything else. And, and you know, with, with the, the talent that we have around them on offense, all they have to do is just distribute the football. And I thought both guys did a really nice job of that. Well, we saw some young guys all across, but I guess we call them the three amigos, right? <laughs> but um, I don't know, I would call them the human vacuum cleaners, uh, like Brooks Robinson. Uh, we saw the three receivers, uh, Brinson, Smith, Jacoby, George, and what's impressive is one, obviously we, we see how they fight for the football, but also how the ball just so easily goes into their, into their hands. Yeah, they, they make it look effortless, right, which is usually a sign of, um, you know, that's what the special ones do. They, they make easy things look easy, and sometimes they make hard things look easy. Um, they, made, um, they made routine plays, and then they all made special plays, and... Um, I think that's what we've seen them do in practice, um, and it's fun. It's fun to watch those guys develop. It's fun for them to, to get more confidence in what to do. Uh, they're learning, and once they really, really know what to do, you can see that they've got a great future here. Manny, you look at these young guys, and you can see all of a sudden these last two recruiting classes that you've put together, what talent there is. And I think it's fair to explain that they're very talented, but they also have to learn a lot of football before they can get on the field. Yeah, if you think about it, when you talk about those two classes, we're, we're 15 games into their career, right? The, the, the 21 class, they're four games into their career. So that's, you know, in, in, if you look at the whole thing as a marathon, um, you know, we're hardly past the first mile marker of, right. of, of their career, certainly the 21s. Um, the neat thing is that they know that they've not arrived. They know what they need to get better at. They know, you know, we talk, you know, we tell the truth on Green Tree Practice Field. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, you mentioned their talent. I, I, I think their work ethic and their, their character and demeanor is what really sets all of those guys apart because um, they're not satisfied with their performance. I mean, I think they know they've got some ability, but they know that they, uh, they don't want to be good when great's available. What did you think about when you saw Brinson make that catch? That'd be number one. And then Smith, you used him in a variety of ways coming out of the backfield, which was a, a clever way to use him as well. The Brinson catch was phenomenal. I, you know, first of all, I thought it was pass interference. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then it was ruled out of bounds. But I, I had a suspicion, you know, when he came down that his elbow hit, you know, and an elbow equals a foot. And, um, but just the, the wherewithal against really, really good coverage to be able to see that thing through I mean, there's a couple of things. One, to be able to secure the catch. Two, to be able to secure the catch when you hit the ground. I mean, you've seen a lot of guys catch the ball, and then on the impact of the ground, the ball kind of rolls out. Uh, so for him to finish that play, um, that's special now. That's, 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 it's, a, it's a play of the year uh, nominee for sure. Manny, when you talk about game speed, you can only simulate so much in scrimmages and on the practice field. And I, I talked to Van Dyke after the game, and one of the questions is, what did you learn? He says, it's a lot faster than I thought. He's got no idea what's coming down yeah. the road. I mean, right? But it really is. You, you can only do so much in practice. And when you get in a game, no matter who it's against, 
the tempo just goes up and up and up. Yeah, you got it. You got to get in games, and that's part of it, you know. And it's not even necessarily the the physical speed; it's the mental, mental. speed in which right. things happen, and the plays come fast, and um, and they have a they have a quick short life span, you know. And, and then you got to let it go because here comes the next one, and um, if you get caught up in the mistake of you know one play, you're, you're now you're not thinking about the next play. So that's a big part of game day that doesn't occur in practice, you know, and. Uh, and I, again, I thought of our young guys handle that really well, but it is going to get faster for him for sure. Uh, you probably already know this about James Williams, but Don had him on the radio after the game, and you could feel his radiant smile coming through the radio. And he played that extended activity, had got his first interception. He's a large, large man to be playing safety, but uh, his enthusiasm and the way he's playing. You have to be encouraged by that. He plays a game with that spirit. Uh, we saw that in Atlanta against Alabama. I mean, James James views the football field as his playground. You know, um, it was great to see him make the interception. He's got to learn how to high point it, uh, and 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 really, if he stays on his feet, we get some return after the after the uh, the, the INT if we can block the intended receiver. But he, uh, you know, yes, you, you you notice him. He's hard to hide on a football field, right? He can run. He's tackled well so far in um, in the games. Um, some of the nuances of the coverages and eye control and things like that, I think he'll continue to improve. But that's the reason why he came here. It's the reason why I've been recruiting that guy since he was in eighth grade. Manny, can you share with everyone the value of game tape? I, I, you'll have the number, I'm sure, today, what, how many people actually played. But just the value of three reps or 35 reps of game tape. You, you, you get to reinforce your coaching, right? Because the players, they hear you in practice, you know? But when they get in the game, the game has the ultimate accountability. You know, if you didn't play your gap, the offense moves forward. If you uh, didn't block your guy, the offense moves backwards. You know, so that happens in practice too. But in practice, you know, the coach says, hey, you got to do this better. But there's not that, you don't really feel the entire football team being punished for poor technique, poor execution, poor assignment, whatever. You get in the game and it does. And then there's a fatigue element that comes in the game that's a little bit different than what you see in practice as well, just with the pacing of the play. So, um, so we have we had some young guys that got some really really good tape and they and and I think the trick always with the young ones is they flash and you see everyone sees their really good plays, um, but then there's other ones too and, and what you really try to do is you try to get those other plays um, even when you're not doing the spectacular that you're dependable right and that's really what wins right you got to get everybody dependable to do their job the way it's meant to be done if you do that generally your talent will create the special plays. There's so many guys. Uh, Leonard Taylor played. Uh, Roberts played at defensive end, Smith at striker, uh, Willie Smith's son. He looks like he's got a lot of athleticism. Mm -hmm. athleticism. So you had a, this core of young guys really got in there. And, and again, as you mentioned, some other guys flashed, but you can see their, their potential. Yeah, and, um, and, and we've seen it through the scrimmages. And it was fun because the young guys, you know, they all lived with each other in the dorms and they were all rooting each other on. and. Um, Guys have great performances in the kicking game, you know, and we'll, we'll continue to highlight that. And, and, and uh, so it's fun. It's fun to see a team develop. It's fun to see these guys continue to grow. Um, that makes our team better because that does push our older guys, creates competition. I think back to when I got here in 2016 and everybody thought I was joking when I said, I'm going to start the best linebackers. And, you know, all of a sudden, McLeod, Pickney, and Shaq started and never looked back. I and mean, we started, you know, Joe Jackson as a freshman. We started. Malik Young, a corner, as a freshman. You know, Trajan Bandy started some games as a freshman. Um, Jonathan Garvin started some, you know, so it's just fun to see. You know, I always, I used, I always tell the Jonathan Garvin story in 2017. He made two of the plays of the season on those strip sacks against Virginia Tech and against Notre Dame um, as a true freshman. But that was a process to get to November. He was a much better player in November than he was in September. And that's how your staff, you know, you, you pour in these young guys because um, you never know. They all develop and, and get to help the team at different times. Manny, I, I want to make sure we bring this up. Set a record, a University of Miami record in yards on offense. The number 739 yards, 10 TDs. I don't know how many times that's happened, but 739 yards, no matter what the situation is, that's a heck of an accomplishment. Right. Look, obviously, you know, we were much better than they were. Correct. But what the team did is the team behaved the way the team should. Mm -hmm. um, more important than the, the yards to me are a byproduct of, um, you know, we had no procedural penalties on offense. You know, we, uh, you know, again, we were we were clean with the football. You know, we didn't turn it over. Um, you know, you mentioned one. We had very, very, the ball was not on the ground. We had very few drop passes. We just we, we were a clean performance, and I think we would have been a handful for most teams 
that would have shown up in our stadium. So certainly, yes, we you know we've decided talent advantage over our opponent, but but we can still control our assignments, um, our discipline, um, our effort, enthusiasm. I thought all those things were really clean. Um, we have a big opponent coming up, Virginia, which we'll get to in, in our next segment. Uh, some of those guys, a guy like uh, Cody Brown, uh, uh, Franklin got in there. Can those guys help you out? Plus, you get Knighton coming back. Would you expect that those guys can help you in this this upcoming game? I think you're, they're going to have to have play some role. You know, I mean, if running back, a high impact position. You know, um, you know, obviously Cam made some big plays uh, last Saturday. Um, it will be good to get Jalen back. I think he adds a different di uh, dimension to our offense. Um, but it was good to see the way that Cody and Thad ran the ball. And they, they stayed behind their pads, ran downhill, showed good patience. Um, and, I, and I think you'll see more of them in the future. Manny, a, a young man that has struggled a little bit the first part of this season is Will Mallory. He had a couple drops and things haven't gone his way. But I was watching the tape very closely. He may have had his best day physically. He didn't have any catches, but he did a great job blocking. And I, I don't want that to get overshadowed. Yeah, you're right about Will. Will threw his body around. Um, and there are a lot of ways you can affect the game without the ball in your hands, mm -hmm. right? And we've got great confidence in Will. We, we know the type of player he is and what we saw, you know, all throughout spring and camp and what he's done in past seasons. And it's just a matter of time before the big plays start to return for our tight end position. All right, the Virginia Cavaliers are here on Thursday. We'll talk about that and much more with University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz as we continue right after this. The school bus. The Zack wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. Welcome back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr., Miami and Virginia on Thursday at 7.30 with Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz. And uh, coach, your the vision, your vision came under a little bit of a, I would kind of call it an outside attack, maybe the university's vision as well. And you had some comments about that the other day in terms of where the program is and, and where you want to see it, see it going. Yeah, you do, um, any team has to be aligned, you know, has to be united in vision, as you mentioned. Um, and, just like a team would, I think. I think everybody inside the university felt, um, yeah, a little disrespected, a little attacked when you when you feel that there's an accusation where everybody doesn't have the same goals, you know. And and, and we know um, in this athletic department, you know, what President Frank's goals are for this university and how important athletics and specifically football is towards that. Um, certainly in this athletic department with Blake James. Um, and what his goals are and, and, and our goals as a coaching staff for this football team. And, and the word excellence is, is, you know, the goal in all those things. Um, the process of getting there, you need support across the board. When you, the, you know, it's very hard for Miami to win if Miami is not united and unified towards um, that cause. Um, you know, you know we, we talk about old conversations about the stadium I mean I can't believe we're still talking about that you know and, and as you guys know I mean I was in the Orange Bowl in the 80s and we did, we're going to get into counting students and counting who's there I, I don't that wasn't a thing back then no one cared um, our stadium is amazing and there's been a lot of things you know when I got here in 2016 there were a lot of things that weren't amazing you know the stadium before they did the renovation it wasn't a great place you know it just wasn't a half a billion dollars makes it pretty special that's why they put the Super Bowl there and every other event, you know. Um, our campus, you know, our dorms, you know, they were substandard, they just were. Um, and that hurt us in recruiting, that, they're amazing now. Our campus is, is transforming and it, it has such a positive impact when recruits come on our campus. Um, you know, the, the, the SOFR indoor facility, it's hard for us to imagine how we even survived, how this program survived without that. We forget it's only been open for three years. The coach's office is only really open for a better part of two. 
Um, there's so many things, you know, we're attacking the locker room next. I mean, there's so many things that were reasons why you would not come to Miami. Um, and we have been shooting those down slowly but surely. And I think when you mentioned Don, the recruiting classes the last two years, you know, those are the two, the, the class of 20 was the first class that really in a full cycle got to see our new stuff. You know, they got, and, and that's, did that help? Yeah, of course it helped. Remember they came here after a six and seven season, you know, with, with tons of negativity. So, you know, you stack that class, you do the 21 class, you get the guys like James and LT, and obviously we've seen the, the receivers, and, and there's, there's so many more special guys in that class. And great players want to play with great players. You know, I, I, I would want to come play with, for Tyler Van Dyke and Jake Garcia if I'm a wide receiver or running back. I don't want to block for those guys if I'm an offensive lineman. I want to play linebacker behind LT. I want to play DB besides James Williams, and there's many other guys I can name. Um, but I think the key is, and maybe what, you know, hopefully the good that comes out of this is that is that this does bring us together, you know, is that, you know, look, I'm responsible for the results in the field, and we have to play better. Ultimately, we'll get judged by how we play and our performances, and I understand that, and I know our first three performances weren't what we wanted, not inside the program or outside the program, but that doesn't stop the fact on where we're going. So sometimes some short-term setbacks don't affect the long-term vision, the long-term goal, which is going to happen, and it's going to happen because we continue to bring in the, the type of people that we want to build this program with. So. I'm proud of the support that we get, um, you know, in the athletic department and at the university level. And, uh, and again, I think if our people come together and understand that we can't, the worst thing we can do is fear monger our recruits away. And that's been a cycle here. And it's hurt. It hurts the program. You know, we want to do the opposite. You know what I mean? If, if I, I'm okay with the attacks that come from the outside. I don't want the attacks from the inside. I want to circle the wagons. And that doesn't mean we lower our standards now. Two things can be true at once. You know, we got very, very high standards for our performance. When we don't meet it, there's no one more disappointed than the people inside this building. Um, but we also know we've got to keep the forward momentum and we've got to continue to add talent to our roster because that's the only way to get the program back where we want it to be. And Manny, you look at President Julio Frank and our athletic director, Blake James, and I look no more than last season on how those two men provided the leadership to get football played. You start with President Frank, he set an example for the nation on how we're going to play sports. And Blake James, and the, the amount of effort that was put forth every minute with the administration here in this athletic department to make a game happen. I think that proves to me one heck of a commitment. Yeah, we forget the narrative of what it was like last summer, mm -hmm. summer 2020. Uh, everything was, it may not be safe to play a football season, may not be safe to bring students on campus. Um, and Dr. Frank was one of the first ones. And I'll, and I'll tell you, he's mentioned this. I mean, the, our football team last summer, in summer 2020, and their pattern of behavior, when we brought those guys back for summer workouts, because if all of a sudden if they had not done the right decision-making and not done the right habits and behaviors, and let's say we had had a major outbreak on our team in the summer, it would have hurt his stance mm -hmm. to allow us to play football. So to me, the connection between Dr. Frank and our football program was as tight as it could be last summer because that, you know, sort of, you know, him showing the trust in our players that he could bring them back on campus and we could role model the proper behavior and then our players repaying his trust by doing all the right things and, and, and handling all the protocols of coronavirus, that gave him the platform to go to the ACC and say, this is my wheelhouse, I'm an expert at this, we can play. And again, in hindsight, oh, of course we played, but mm -hmm. last August and July, Go Google the articles that were being written. It was a, the, the thought was almost absurd. Also, I, want, I think I want to tie this into recruiting in the stadium and, and uh, local players and all that. I can't imagine a kid anywhere, Dane or Brad, that knows Hard Rock Stadium, that isn't a, who's playing at some Optimus Field, that's not daydreaming about catching the game-winning pass at Hard Rock Stadium that's good enough for the Super Bowl, that's good enough for the championship game, or all we have to do, you talk about vision, we've seen the vision. We've already experienced it. In 2017, we had three weeks in a row that were incredible. We've seen it with other games against Florida State, what Hard Rock Stadium has meant in terms of home field advantage and what, how a unifying crowd, what a unifying crowd inside that stadium does for this program. That's exactly right. And, and, and look, our responsibility in the program is to put a team out there that performs in a way where people want to come and, and, and root it on. And, and that's why I said, I mean, our fans that were there this past Saturday, they were phenomenal. You know, and right. our players noticed that because uh, no one knew what, what it was going to be like. 
last Saturday. And, um, you know, my thing is this. I'm just, you know, I'm for Miami. I'm, I'm for the people of Miami. That, that's our advantage. You know, people want to talk about resources. There's going to be college football programs that are always going to have shinier toys in Miami. That's the way it's always been. We got really nice toys, but someone's going to be able to afford something shinier. But what they can't have is that they can't have our people. You know, we stay together, we bring our people together. That, that makes us a little bit different. And that's how we've always been able to compete, always. You know, when we've been a little, oh, well, this facility, that facility. We got nice stuff. We really have really nice stuff. First class, first class. But I'll put our people over anybody else's people. You know, and that's, that's our fan base, that's our community. But more important, that's our recruiting base. You know, and to me, to be able to continue to make strides there, bring those type of guys into our program, uh, that's what makes Miami, Miami. And by the way, that seems pretty darn good when it comes to tailgating. <laughs> <laughs> Before and after. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We got, we got a good dose of that walking into the stadium last week. Those people were revved up and ready to go. They love their, uh, their tailgating. You got a, uh, speaking of which, you got a big opponent coming in here, Virginia. They're going to be desperate. They're 0-2 in conference play. First time in six years they've started 0-2 in conference play. They've got a quarterback that's a Steve Young clone, averaging about 428 yards a game through the air. So that's a pretty big challenge. Yeah, they are number one passing offense in the country, and it, it, the tape backs it up. Um, quarterback, as you mentioned, I mean, his arm, it jumps off the tape. I mean, he is hitting guys. His accuracy, um, they, they run a lot of shots down the field. They're much more vertical in their passing game this year than they've been in the past. Um, Virginia was, was always uh, very complex, a lot of formations, motions, shifts. But they really ball controlled you with a short passing game. They they still have that in them, but now they they can really stretch you down the field. Uh, their upgrade at wide receiver talent is is dramatic and noticeable. You'll see guys two, three, and four can all go win down the field, and they they've added a tight end that looks like LeBron James uh, <laughs> Woods, number zero. He's about six seven, two seventy. Um, he looks like a power forward running around. So they they've done a nice job with their weapons that they have. But you will see this quarterback now. I mean, I mean there there are plays where he is hitting. Guys, in the if they if they didn't have their helmet on, they'd all have broken noses because he's throwing the ball and it's hitting them right here. I mean, right in the mouth. So um, uh, highly accurate. Uh, you got to get him off a of rhythm somehow because he's he's really really good and he's got weapons that can make it happen. Their head coach Bronco Mendenhall, a defensive guy, and he has built that defense. They're very sturdy. They're very strong, which they have been for years. But they are now bouncing between that odd and even front. They, they bring some difficult situations as well. Yeah, they can go odd, they can go even, and then what they've got into is some of the three safety look that you're seeing more and more now in college ball. So they, they have always been um, able to throw a lot at you. They've always been you know really into disguising. They can be very, very multiple. So if you're, as a quarterback, if you don't really understand your keys and what you're looking at out there, they're, they've got a, a system designed to make you make a mistake and throw the ball into coverage. Um, and we've seen that in some prior games with them in the past. Uh, these games have always been tight. I think uh, 10 points were decided the last three okay. contests. Mm -hmm. No one scored over 20 in this, in this game um, in, in four years. So I think that's, that just kind of shows the DNA of both of these teams. And um, I expect this one to be tight as well. They have a, a huge offensive line, including a tackle that's 6'10". <laughs> I'll be playing basketball. But... Uh, you have been able to badger them a little bit coming off the edge. How important will that be? It'll be really important. Uh, that's been a key to our success against Virginia uh, through the years is, uh, is doing a good job versus the run game. They throw it a lot more than they run it, but you still have to do a solid job versus the run. And, and then you do have to be able to harass the quarterback, you know, and uh, we have been able to get the quarterback on the ground against them in the, in the past. Obviously, they're a new team. We're a new team. You do mention they've got a lot of experience at offensive line, and, they're, and, and the quarterback he can he can maneuver time in the pocket. So, uh, you know, it's um, it's important. It's it's tied in coverage and, and, and pass rush. I mean, the coverage has got to work. They like to chip a lot with to help out their tackles. You know, to, to kind of nullify the threat of the defensive end. So, they're going to present very often seven in protection at least for a while. So it's not going to be a just you know fly back there and sack them. You got to get the now. You're presenting seven, you only got three down the field for a minute, right? So you got to be able to win the initial coverage look, you know, and then somebody pops off a block and is able to get the guy on the ground. Manny, how do you handle the short week? You have, you have Saturday and you're kicking off Thursday. Yeah, you jam a lot into a little bit of time, you know. Um, they, they I have a short week for them too. They had one more day than, than we did, but they have to travel. Um, basically, Sunday was a Sunday and a Monday. Mm -hmm. It was a Sunday for the players, it was both for the coaches. Um, you know, and then and then Monday was a Tuesday, our Tuesday practice. Uh, Tuesday is our Wednesday practice. You know, more third down, red zone, that type of deal. And then suddenly, the day before the game. So Wednesday is a um, 
sort of a half of a Thursday, half of Friday, and then, then you're on to game day. So it happens fast. Virginia's a difficult team to play in a short week because schematically they're so unusual from what you see week in and week out. Um, but I think it's also led to an urgency with our guys. Our guys, you know, they, you know, they were ready. We put the Central Connecticut game to bed right away, and, and, and they're ready to focus all their attention on UVA. Uh, we'll wrap this up uh, with this. Um, we should mention it's a, the beginning of conference play for the University of Miami. So you're joining the party. Some teams are already playing. Some teams are already in, in uh, you know, behind the eight ball, including Virginia. They're only two. Uh, some teams have been tagged with two losses, but this begins in an eight-game marathon for the University of Miami. Yeah, and what you see is, look, I mean, you look around the country, look, with a couple exceptions at the top of the polls, college football is so wide open right now. I mean, there's a lot of conference races that are wide open. Um, you know, it, it's hard to rank 25 teams right now. So uh, we are, you know, we're, we're starting our conference schedule a little bit later than some other people have. Um, but I think everybody, everybody knows in our league, everybody's in it, you know, both sides. I mean, it, it is as wide open as you've seen it in the ACC. Um, we, we always expect these games to be difficult in conference, um, but our guys have been training for this all year, and I think we're excited to go play. All right, Coach. Very best of luck against Virginia. We will continue. The University of Miami head coach will continue on the show, the Manny Diaz show, right after this. Hello, I'm the Good Greek Spiro, and I have some very exciting news. Good Greek Moving and Storage is launching our Welcome Home program. Book your next move with Good Greek, and you will receive our housewarming package, which includes gift cards valued at over $1,000, along with a neighborhood guide as you discover your new favorite local businesses. For the best move ever, and to receive your exclusive gift offer, visit goodgreek.com and welcome home. Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit uhealthsportsmedicine.com. It's now time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz, and I know you have something special for us today, coach. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of continue the commercial we started last week, you know, and, and brag on our young guys a little okay. bit. And so, some of the plays that we saw, but then again, some of the plays that maybe people didn't see. Um, and we're, I want to start off again on special teams. What a, what a great place to make an impact. And we're going to actually highlight a guy that we looked at last week, Deshaun Trout, and he ran down there and, and, and had a big hit on a guy. Uh, but this time he got the tackle. Okay. So the first thing he's doing is reading the return. Okay. So the tight end's flying across the field. That lets him know that the return's to the right, so he's going to avoid a block to the right. Great speed, great feel, avoiding a guy miss, and then just physicality. I mean, big time hit, big time play almost rips the guy's head off inside the 20 yard line big play though got everybody on the sideline juiced up fired up and that to me is what it's all about you know well coach you always say as soon as that ball's kicked on this they're playing defense and he's a perfect example that's Miami defense right there so to me that's that's what you want you want guys on special teams that gets everybody fired up on the sideline and and, and now the defense you know they get a little boost from from seeing that this one was really cool later in the game Malik Curtis one of the faster guys we have on our team, true freshman, he's out there playing the contained guy out here at number two. And same thing, the running back decides, the, the runner decides he wants to cut back because there's a bunch of guys beating people up in here. Watch Tyler Johnson right here. Tyler Johnson, uh, freshman from Killian. His, guy, his guy's <laughs> just standing there, he just knocks him, knocks him out of the way. So there's all, here's Troutman beating up on his guy, boom. So all kinds of butts being kicked in there. So if I was a runner, I, would, I don't know if I'd want to go in that way either. So he's gonna try to come out here to the field Malik doesn't make an open field tackle, does a great job, puts, a, puts a, the, the shoulder right on him, wraps the guy up, immediately knocks him to the ground. And again, great play. Every, got everybody fired up on the sideline as well. A lot of conversation about tackling. That's about as textbook as you can get. It is. It really is. Does a great job, comes to balance. Malik's a great athlete and uh, super fast guy. So you love seeing, you know, we played a lot of offense in high school. So, you, you know, didn't get a lot of tackle opportunities. So to see him put a guy on the ground was, was really cool. Now, a couple, couple of shots on defense. It's a play, of course, certainly everybody saw. Um, Marcus Clark, though, is doing a great job in coverage. 
Okay, again, Marcus, another young guy in last year's recruiting class. This is Cam Kitchens at safety. And he does a really nice job. So we're trying to run a little flood concept right here like that. Everybody takes it away. So there's really nothing available for the quarterback. Okay, they're trying to leave this guy on the flat late. We take care of that by bumping into that guy. We're disciplined on the backside in case he got some sort of throwback play or something like that. So everybody's kind of doing the right thing. And so the quarterback just says, well, I'm just going <laughs> to throw the ball out there. And to me, that's what center fielders are meant to do. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we want to high point this, not catch the ball down there, and then try to keep our feet to turn defense into offense. But I want to show you two, two things about this play that I thought were really special about the game. Okay, One, watch Bubba Bolden right here. Bubba's been a great leader on our team, right? And look, he already knows. Look at how excited <laughs> he is right there. He's as excited. Look, look, look at the, the energy and the excitement of Bubba. He's as excited as, as if he made the play, and that's what's really cool. Maybe let's go over the, when you're recruiting and you're looking for special talent, one word that comes up in the secondary is range. I don't think you can cover as much ground as this young man did right here. Well, these little ticks, these are the, these are the college numbers. These are the pro right. numbers. These are the college numbers. So to me, if you're a deep middle safety and you can get out to those college numbers, now think about that. What that means, if I'm a corner, that's nine yards from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline. If you say, hey, all I got to do is just cover that nine yard track right there, that's going to make me feel really, really good. But you know, one of the cool things right here, look at the celebration. Look at the two guys right there. That's LT and James Williams with Cam Kitchens right, right there behind. So really fun to see three true freshmen out on the field making that play and what that does for everybody. Pretty fun. All right, we've got some more, though. There's plenty more. This is actually LT, one of his better, better plays in here inside. Same thing. They try to knock a block on him. Look what he does to, look what he does to the guy. His technique can get better. He's got to get his pads a little lower. That will matter against better competition. But this guy just dominates. Now, it's one thing to get here. Some guys have a knack of finishing this play, and some guys don't. And, and for a young guy, he understands how to flatten yourself down the line. Okay, we say that all tackle for losses are only cane roll tackles. You only got to roll on your back to get the guy on the ground, which is what he does. Wraps him up, makes a play, and lets his teammates come finish. Great to see a, a guy like LT finish a play like that. And it, it, people don't understand, I, I don't think, that there's as much technique, if not more, involved on the defensive side, on the defensive line, than the offensive line. Oh, of course. I mean, you're, hit, you're hitting blocks. You have to understand, um, you know, what they're trying to do to you and, and where the ball is going. So again, he understands that the guy's trying to block him that way. That means the ball must be going that way. So you got to fly down down the line uh, and have a chance to get make a play. And let's finish with. I got about five plays here on offense. Okay. And again, some that people saw, but I, I do want to point out some other things that um, just high high effort guys. You know what I mean? And again, the block right here by our tight end. Does a great job. This is Rashard Smith. And again, we're hiding him out in the backfield. I think Brett Lashley did a phenomenal job of you know, finding different ways to get him the ball. But you see guys straining to make blocks. And now, this is just what Rashard's got. He's got the ability to make things happen. Great stride. So many guys get tackled here. But what makes Rashard so unique, he's got great lower body strength. He just has a unique ability to run out of tackles, stays on his feet, finishes, sticks to landing. <laughs> And look, look at our sideline. The same thing. And look, look at, look at the, 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 the older guys. Guys on our sideline are so fired up for I think Bichard. I see Nesta Silvera so sprinting yeah. that 300-pound yeah. guy going to congratulate the offensive Nesta's guy. Nesta's there. It's just, and that, and that's, that, that was the energy I talked about all day. I, was just, I, I just was so, so excited. That was Elijah Arroyo at tight end, too, securing the block right there to get it started. So, again, you know, one freshman springing another freshman. D. Wiggins doing a nice job down the field, you know, hands aside on his man, and, and away we go. So, and there, there's, there's Chase Smith. This is what's always fun to watch. Another true freshman. All these guys live with each other. They're seen on the sideline. Look at Tyler Johnson, you know, a young guy on the sideline. I mean, it, I know it seems silly, but it's a big deal. There's Jabari Ishmael. I mean, it's just, it's great to see the guys cheer on, you know, their classmates. <laughs> and Romello Brinson almost beats him in the end zone. Which, speaking of Romello Brinson, this is a play that everybody saw. But again, there's so much beyond. Just let's talk about a couple different things. There's Cody Brown, true freshman, on blitz pickup. Okay? They're trying to run a middle blitz. Boom, sticks his guy for another true freshman, Jake Garcia, to be able to make the play. And then how special is that? And Coach, let's go back. We go back to, to Cody Brown. You can't play these players, the, the, especially in the backfield, unless they're able to pick up the blitz, that's right? Easy. You can't put them on the field. You got to play without the ball. Yeah. And, they gotta, and, not, and that's two things. I know who to block, and you got to know how to block him. And he does a great job. He's sturdy, delivers the blow. And then our quarterbacks, if they have time, I mean, how about this, man? That is so special. There's the elbow down. There's the body in the field of play. 
and that's just that that is a that 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 gets everybody's attention. It was it was a shame we didn't have the initial reaction of, of touchdown, but after review it was pretty cool. And again, a guy like Keyshawn Smith. Remember, this guy's just a true true sophomore. You know, what I mean, he's down there. I mean, he's so excited for a guy that is playing the same position as him, and that to me is, is great team ball. That's going to really do wonders for us. Here's here's the the next one. All three amigos. There's Romello. There's Brashard. And there's Jacoby George. And again, we got we got Arroyo right there. This is Thad Franklin at running back with Garcia in the game. <laughs> and boom, they're in a, they're in a cover four structure. So this guy's got to take Brashard, which means that the corner's got all the outside receiver all by himself. And watch how Jacoby just does a nice job. He just he he, he sprays his release. He widens, which is going to widen the corner some knowing that that guy's got to grab that. So when he bangs it back to the post, there's plenty of area right there to let it go. Jake hits him. I mean, look how sweet a throw that is. Right in stride. Jacoby does a great job catching the ball away from his body in a big touchdown. And again, here come, here come all the freshmen to come and celebrate. A little, little minor nuance right here with Jake. Just watch, watch how he hits the top of his drop, resets, comes forward. Great balance, you know what I mean? Great platform to throw. Just, just... I mean, what a fun, clean pocket to throw in, you know, and just lets it rip. But when you got guys down the field that can make things like that happen, it gets, it's pretty fun. And then last two, and again, I'm, this, is, this is cool. I'm going to show this from the end zone copy. This is going to be Thad Franklin's touchdown. But again, everybody saw Thad's touchdown, and we're proud of Thad. Khalil Brantley, another true freshman out of Miami Northwestern. Watch right. the block he springs on this defensive end back here. Watch this. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's delivering a blow. That's, here's Mike McLaughlin, a true freshman at right, at right tackle, condensing. Watch, watch, watch where this guy starts. He's here. Look where the hash mark is. Watch where he ends up. Drives his guy all the way to the hash. Look at that hole right there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Seymour's in there See, at yeah, center. Yeah, you got Seymour right? in there at center. And then, bang. Now, if that gets out in the open field, he's able to go all the way, runs through a tackle, gets in the end zone. Pretty cool. And then this last one right here. And again, I'll show this from the end zone. Copy right here. Okay, same thing. Now you got C you got Seymour, you got Ryan Rodriguez, you got Isaiah Walker. You still got McLaughlin on the backside. And watch, I want to show this one for watch Isaiah Walker. <laughs> Work through his man. Look at look how he can get his hands inside on, on, on the linebacker, run his feet, run his feet, run his feet, run his feet. I mean that this guy, the initial contact is right here around the 47 yard line. And that guy gets driven back. I mean, I mean, by the end, he just throws Isaiah off because he's just he's just tired of getting tired of getting dominated. So again, nice job inside by Ryan and Seymour, moving their guys around. Just it's just fun to see guys fight again. Everybody saw the backs run and all kind of backs got a chance. Paris doing a great job here with his Mike Allstott impersonation. But I know Don, I know you love seeing the offensive line get after people. I appreciate. It. I know you put that one in for me. Coach. I did. I absolutely <laughs> did. So that's what we got this week. It's been, it's a fun week. We'll see more of these guys in the future. All right, that'll do it for the breakdown segment with our head coach, Manny Diaz. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and 2ers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation. With you Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U-Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. The Joint Chiropractic Adjustment of the Game. And boy, oh boy, is this ever an adjustment. Jake Garcia, quarterback, and watch this play by Romello Brinson. In the air, twisting, turning, shielding, and hauling in a one-handed grab for a Miami touchdown. An incredible acrobatic catch by Romello Brinson, the joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. Happy to welcome you back to the Main Idea Show, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., our podcaster and sideline reporter, Josh Darrow, Miami and Virginia 
on Thursday at 7.30 and uh, kind of a look back and maybe also a look to the future in this, in this case, the quarterbacks for the University of Miami, Tyler Van Dyke, Jake Garcia. We saw them the other day, perhaps see more of them. And uh, I think we found out they can throw the football. Well, I was thoroughly impressed with how mature they looked. And I know there was a, a conversation about the quality of a, opponent, but no, no really any pre-snap issues. No interceptions, no bobbled snaps, because there were three or four centers in the game. So there was no exchange issues. And the way that they managed the huddle, the way that they managed the offense, and the pure production, when you look at it, 10 touchdowns, 739 yards, a, a school record, everything fell into place. But you can see that both of those young men are talented, that they're comfortable in the offense, and that they have an understanding of what they're supposed to do. And really, when the connection to me that was most impressive was the timing between the, with the quarterback and the wide receivers. Well, look, they, they had the spring. They took all the snaps. And that's the guys they're working with. Mm -hmm. They're working with, they work with every level of the offense in the spring. They come in and look, we could say what we want about the opponent. It's okay. They needed that. You know, it's, it's why you have games like that. In part, they, you would have thought they would have gotten in, even if the Eric had played. That's a game you hope to get those guys reps in. And I think the other thing too is they didn't really force anything. They took what was there. A lot was there to be had. But there were also a couple beautiful throws in that game. You know, the throws down the field were nice. I agree the timing with the receivers was nice. They, on the sideline, their demeanor was great. I mean, they have different personalities, but everything just seemed under control. You know, everything just seemed to be the way it, was to be, the way it should be. And then obviously, you know, it changes, obviously, with what's coming next. But for what they had to do, give, you, you know, they checked the grade book. That's what I would say, and I'm gonna tie this into our next subject, which is the wide receivers. Uh, I'm, no, I'm not a play caller. I would throw a million bubble screens to those three wide receivers because every time they touch the ball, it's four yards, five yards. George, Smith, Brinson, they, they suck the ball in. It just, it, they have magnets for hands. You, you are very confident that they are going to make the play. They are natural at what they do. They do not strain to catch the football. We have. The last couple of years, we've been straining as broadcasters about the, the, the drops that have occurred here, and one even occurred on Saturday. But uh, there's a natural ability that comes with that. This program, uh, the lab, Coach Diaz has done a great job identifying the talent, going out and recruiting it, and then getting it to come here. And now you're starting to see the quarterback talent. That room has improved since the day De'Eric King came in, and I see a lot of his mentoring with the quarterbacks, and you see it coming up with the receivers too. So, you know, the one-two punch, the quarterback to the receiver, and the catch that was made in that ball game is going to be a memory for a lifetime. You know, speaking of that, the, the catch by Brinson, getting a little bit of credit to Jake Garcia too, because that ball was that ball was high and outside. Mm -hmm. But if that ball's underthrown, if it's low, Romello doesn't get a chance to make that throw. Now he made an unbelievable catch, but the ball placement on it was pretty was pretty good too. The pass to Jacoby George was literally like poetry in motion. That ball just sat right in his hands, just over the defensive back. Tyler Van Dyke had one too, unfortunately, you know, we had a drop. But the bubble game, you know, they used it they used it all day against Central Connecticut State. Um, but I'm, I'm with Don. This is, this is going to be a different game for them mentally. They talked about how fast the game was last week. It's warp speed for them. It's going to take them a quarter to get used to it. Well, I think we have quarterbacks and wide receivers yeah. are going to get a whole bunch of different looks. We saw that a couple years ago up there. The yep. Cozy Perry started, so did Mark Pope, and uh, the result was not good because, uh, because of the different looks that Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall uh, gave the Miami offense. Um, you mentioned this earlier in the show with Coach Diaz. We were talking about uh, James Williams, we were talking about safeties, and you use the word range. And Miami is going to need range in their deep secondary in this game because that's what Virginia does. They throw the long ball. You know, I, I watched Williams, and I've watched him at practice, and you can't help but see him. I mean, <laughs> we, he, I mean he's six out, right? I mean, and that's what happens with five-star guys. And he, he, he's, he stands out because of his speed, the range we talked about. But what I learned on the, with him watching him in this game is he's a natural at the position. He's, not, he's just not a, a big guy that can run fast that has all the measurables. He plays that position 
like he was made to play it. And then we had the chance to interview him, and Josh and I were in the locker room afterwards in the postgame show, and this guy lights up. There's nothing, there's no place he'd rather be than the University of Miami, and there is nothing he'd rather do than be playing football. I'd like to see if we had another interception this week against Virginia. We will talk more about the Virginia Cavaliers and the Miami Hurricanes. 7.30 kickoff. We'll talk more about that game as we continue on the show right after this. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is a team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget locally or nationwide. And now Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. The school bus. The Zack Wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. Welcome back to the show. Joe Zgacki, Don Bailey Jr., Josh Darrow, Miami and Virginia. 7.30 kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium. Virginia has lost their first two conference games. They got off to a great start. They were 2-0, and but now they've lost back-to-back -back games to Carolina and Wake Forest. Defensively, they've struggled, but also, um, untypically, they've struggled with penalties and been undisciplined, and I just have this feeling that you know they're going to fix those issues coming into this game. Well, that, that's out of character for Virginia right. for as long as I, I know that uh, we've been going up there. They've been a, a well-disciplined team. They're, all of their coaches have always seemed to run a very, very tight program. I'm very impressed with Bronco Mendenhall and how his career has gone and how he continues to upgrade and be competitive. But they've got a quarterback. That, that guy is the deal. And last i guess it was last year joe you saw him warming up and you're like okay let's let's hope he <laughs> let's hope he doesn't come into football game because he was questionable but they've got good balance on offense they they bagged the tight end to, uh, the, the transfer <laughs> for who was at oklahoma state i believe we had him in johnny woods uh, Jelani, yeah. yeah we had him i, I remember going to my chart i'm going six seven 250 and pound by the tight way, end every bit of it you put <laughs> oh, the film yeah. on you're like yeah who's that no that's him and i mean and They've done a great job, and that defense always comes up with plays. No matter what, no matter what, how you prepare for them, he's always got a little trick in there for so you. So you know they're going to be prepared and ready to go. They're absolutely going to be prepared and ready to go. You know, the odd thing, too, we talked about undisciplined penalties. Usually they're, they're also pretty uh, – they make it tough on the opposition defensively, and that's kind of been the weak link this year so far, at least against Wake Forest and, and North Carolina. I mean, they gave up a lot of points and a lot of yards, especially – uh, in the passing game. But again, from Bronco Mendenhall, he's looking across the field, as we talked about in the last segment. He sees two young, fresh quarterbacks that he can try uh, and manipulate. But offensively, to the quarterback, Brandon Armstrong, not just like pretty good or really good or we think he's good. Just look at the stats. He's like the, the second best quarterback in the nation. Statistically, he's, he's throwing, throwing for, for almost <laughs> 430 yeah. yards a game. Who does that? But guys, and that's with really not much of a running Correct. game. Correct. I mean, no it, 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 there's not much of a yeah. threat. They know that they're going to live and die on the back of that quarterback. And that's another thing, because they had 1,000-yard rushers being pumped out of there on a pretty frequent basis, and that's not existing right now. He has a talented wide receiver. You mentioned the tight end. Kim? His kid Wicks mm -hmm. uh, right there makes some beautiful catches. Dontavian Wicks, he's averaging yeah. 20 yards a reception. Yeah, and plus, um, and he'll go get, he'll go up and fight for the ball. He'll right. go up in the end zone and make a catch. Number two, Henry, he's got some good acceleration. Then they know we saw it last year. They got 98 and 99, right? They're going to come in, and you know what they're going to do. Thompson, he can play wildcat. Thompson can throw the football. Thompson can run routes. So they're going to test Miami's discipline on defense, right? You really have to understand conceptually what. Virginia is going to try and do when they bring those other guys in. They're always going to be motioning guys all over the place. Kemp's going to go from receiver to running back, back outside. Thompson, he'll set, reset, he'll take the snap. You know, it's, it's just what they try to do. They try and throw so much at you to get you off guard. But at the end of the day, 
it starts it stops and starts with the quarterback and he he's playing at an exceptionally high level you know to pick, to pick up on uh, what Josh said a little bit about their wide receivers and we'll talk about their Virginia's defense but uh, a different slant on this game would be it might come down to which set of wide receivers makes the best catches in this game because Virginia's making tough catches mm -hmm. so you're going to have to match them Miami's going to have to make tough catches this is an experienced secondary they're going up against Grant's been there, Blount's been there. Uh, all five of their guys that have been in the secondary have been in this, been in their program for a long time. Well, Coach talked about it earlier in the show that they're they're playing three safeties now, which right. a lot of people are doing. So it's almost that umbrella look that everybody talks about. They're going to give you the underneath throw. I'm just got to make sure that they get open. And then you got to, as a receiving core, you've got to make some people miss. It's going to be some after contact as far as the receivers go. Yeah, I agree with that. So you're playing three safeties, but the one thing when you watch them is can they run as as good as our guys? Now you got to get the ball in your hands. We know most important responsibility of a receiver is catch the ball. Catch the before ball. Before you run with the ball. Catch the ball. So take Brashard Smith's run. Now we know the level of competition, but a play like that, right? Can you get the ball in space? Can you turn a corner? Will a safety take a bad angle? Because against North Carolina, I mean, they, I stopped charting the big plays that North Carolina had against Virginia. They would just catch and run. Downs was exploding, you know, down the field. Wake Forest used the run game, you know, to set up some of their big plays. Um, down the field. And then they also got them with some trickery. They had a little bit of a double pass in there as well in the red zone. So uh, if Miami can, can get the ball in their guys' hands, I do think there will be plays to be made against the secondary for Virginia. And quickly, I know you're going to be focused on one area. Uh, <laughs> that inside play, the Miami offensive line, they have Mandy Alonzo. Mm -hmm. I think he's been there for 100 years. They're defensive tackle. He's from Gulliver High School. Mm -hmm. And he always plays well against the University of Miami. they got to block him. Joe, he's a hustle guy. He, he's he's been there, uh, meaning on the field since day one. They, they've made him a promise that he can come up there and contribute, and he has. They also have a good nose guard. You know, their, their defensive tackle is going to sit right over the center. He'll shade a little bit. But overall, they are stout, and they try and win with the front six. All right, we will continue on the show. Still to come, keys of the game, Miami and Virginia. We'll continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. The school bus. The Zack Wagon. Wally. No matter what you call your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. The keys of the game are brought to you by AutoNation. No matter how long you've had your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it. And you don't have to buy one from us. We'll give you a top dollar offer and check on the spot. You can deposit right away. Appraise your car today at AutoNation.com. Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Time now for the keys to the game. Miami and Virginia, 730 kickoff Thursday night football. All right, fellas, Miami's got to neutralize the Virginia passing attack. Hurricanes got to create some big plays. That's been kind of the kryptonite of the Virginia defense. And then the third key, hog the ball. Get a running game going. If you're running the football, you might demoralize them. Of course, you keep the quarterback uh, on the sideline. That's one way to neutralize the passing attack. But at the top, you cannot let – Miami's secondary cannot let the ball be, uh, be flying over their heads all night long. You know, Joe, I'm going to switch this around a little bit. I know there's going to be a lot of pressure on the secondary. I want to put pressure on the defensive front. Yep, that's right. Surround them, yep. sack them, harass them, hit them, make his life difficult for a full 60 minutes. And, and we see it, you see it on Sundays, you see it in high school, you see, you've seen it in college football. You hit that quarterback enough, they start hearing things and start hurrying things, and that leads to takeaways. Pressure and, and coverage. Yeah, and he's also a guy who will move, so the, you know, the next wave can hit him too, right? He gets past the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. he's fair game. So make him, make him feel 
make him feel the hurricane defense. You know, make him understand. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I don't want to scramble. Maybe I don't want to roll out. Um, that's kind of been Miami's mo, right? Is, is winning, winning up front. But again, on the back end, we talked about it before. Um, they've got receivers across the board. They will stress Miami's defense on the back end. Okay, um, explosive plays. That has really hurt Virginia. Miami had some explosive plays last week. It sure makes life a lot easier when a Brashard Smith can take the ball around the line of scrimmage and go 75 yards and bang his helmet on the goalpost. And I think there's, this game's going to be more methodical, and I'd like to see some explosive plays in the running game. Explosive play to me is 15 yards, right? You get a 15 yard, it doesn't have to be seven, 75. I'll take a bunch of six, seven, eight, nine, 12 yard runs. That'd make my day. Well, the other thing too, what that does is, you know, you go back and watch the Wake Forest game. I feel like they were always operating third and two, third and one, fourth and one. You don't think that makes the game easier for a quarterback? So the running game could be as much about the efficiency of it, right? That you're always producing positive yards, you're staying ahead of the sticks, you're keeping you know, uh, Virginia uh, off the field, and then allowing the passing game to open up for, for your quarterbacks. But I'm, you know, I'm with Don. I'm all about making the game easy. <laughs> How can you make the game easy? If it's 50 yards down the field, guy catches it and, and houses it, that's great. If it's getting the ball to an athlete in open space and he can make a big play, that's fine too. Even the, but the running game can also make the game easy, right? Especially in this day and age with all the run-pass option and the bubbles because the Virginia safeties, the linebackers, they're gonna start, they will start to bite. That's what opens up the gaps in the second level and creates the space you know, for Miami's athletes to, to be able to do things uh, that will help out this offense. So however it, how, I'm good. I'm good with however it gets done. Running game, run after catch, big plays down the field, protect the quarterback. You know, they pretty much operate an odd front, give those guys time in the pocket. Well, the proof is, in Virginia's losses, if you go back during Bronco Mendenhall's uh, state of Virginia, if you run the ball on them, you win. If they stop the run, uh, he has a pretty high success rate. So you do have to have some kind of run game against Virginia. Wake out ran them last, last week, 220 to 99. I think it's, it's going to be a methodical game. I think it's going to be a very close game. History has proven that. You've got two defensive coaches, uh, two de head coaches that are defensive guys. I think that always makes for a special day. But somebody on the Miami team has got to make the big play at some point. I got one other one. Home field advantage. Yeah. Right? Thursday night, right. under the lights, first ACC game. It means everything to this team. It means everything to starting – this part of the season, which this is the march, this is the march to get to your goal. This is the march to Charlotte. So it's a big game under the lights, national TV. You know, pack the house and make make the kids feel us. Make the kids feel that they got the town behind them. Give them that extra advantage that they used. Let them feed off that energy. Look, the, the energy in Central Connecticut State. I know Manny talked about that and not being on the sidelines. The players created in great energy amongst themselves. Uh, it would be great to have a a, a hard rock, a, a, a packed rock right yeah, tonight like, to, you know, to really lift up the spirits of the team some, some of that noise also creates penalties for the other team so that would always be a, a good situation not that you're encouraging anything Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue on the show right after this hello i'm the good greek spiro and i have some very exciting news good greek moving and storage is launching our welcome home program book your next move with good greek and you will receive our housewarming package which includes gift cards valued at over a thousand dollars along with a neighborhood guide as you discover your new favorite local businesses. For the best move ever and to receive your exclusive gift offer, visit goodgreek.com and welcome home. Greek, moving in storage, your superhero movers. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and twoers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation. We are back on the show, the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Gacky, Don Bailey Jr., and Josh Darrow. All right, fellas, time now for rings or chains. So let's see. We have some challenging questions. Number one, the offense scores first or the defense has a sack first. I, I won the toss, so I'm, I'm going to go first. Go ahead. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go chain, going with chain. I'm going to say uh, 
Virginia gets the ball first, and Miami gets the first sack of the game. Puts them behind the eight ball. All right. Well, I'm going to go range, Joe. I want to score first. I want to get points on the board. I want the, the Virginia to feel the heat of the fan and get some points going early on. Can I go rings and chains in the same one? Can we go strip, <laughs> sack, sack, strip, fumble, score? Let's take it. Can we get, I'm confusing the guys in the back. I need to. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> I guess that works. All right. We got yeah, That's yeah. what I'm going for. I'm going all in. I'm all pushing right. all my money to the table up front. Mr. Cre creative. That's good. Have that's some right. coffee or something today. All right. Number two. The offense rushes for over 150 yards, or the defense holds Virginia to under 100, 100 yards rushing. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go rings. I'm going to go for over 150 yards rushing. Miami gets over 150 yards rushing. Virginia is not going to get 100 yards rushing because they won't have the ball and they'll be throwing all night long anyway. I'm following Joe Zagaki's lead on that. We're going to go with the, with number one. We're going to go with the rush yards by Miami. They're going to get some explosive plays. You've got the rooster is back, right? right? So we're right. going to see some big plays out of him as well. All right, I'm the contrarian. Hang that chain on my neck. <laughs> we are shutting down Virginia in that running game. No Wayne Talapapa. It's not happening. Stymieing them up front. The linebackers are going to play great. Make Brennan Ar make Brennan Armstrong beat you. Hang that chain on my neck. All right. Okay. Two rings, one chain. Uh, number three, the offense scores more touchdowns in the entire game, or the defense forces more punts in the first half. So hmm. you're the mathematician. <laughs> no, that's like a trick question. <laughs> Woo! It's going to take four touchdowns to win the game. So I'm going to go touchdown. I'm going to go rings. And rings. I, I, I don't know Lincoln. that you're going to get four, <laughs> stop them four times in the first half. They're going to get their yards. Right. They're going to get some, you know, Virginia's going to do something. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go rings. And I'm going to go rings as well. That's my. You got to score my, this game to win. That's right. It's going to need some points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give it to me one more time. Put the chain around my neck. So I'm, here's how I deducted this. Six first half possessions. So we'll take your four touchdowns. Okay. And you know what? It's a tie. We stop them four times. We score four. I don't know. Neutralized. I don't know. I get nothing around my neck. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah. Make a declaration. How oh, you got chains? You got. Uh, he's going what double again. He's going. Chain. He's Put back. the chain around. We're okay. stopping them. Right. We're gonna stop. All right. This is a big game. Either any way you look at it, first ACC game, big game for Miami can really kind of start moving their season in the direction they want to go here. Oh, Joe, I think it's a it's a huge game. It's a quality opponent. It's, it's against a great coaching staff, that of Virginia. They've, Miami and Virginia have played tough forever. It'll be no different. You guys just think about what this does for this team heading into the bye week with a W, right? It just yeah. puts them in such a great spot. It kind of sets up everything else. Now there are a bunch of big games beyond this too, but this is the first big game. It's the most important game. It's a home game. It's an ACC game. It can do a lot of good things for this program. No question. Miami, Virginia, big game. Thursday night football for Don Bailey Jr., Josh Sherrill, head coach Manny Diaz. I'm Joe Zagacki. Thanks for joining us right here on the Manny Diaz Show.